Hello, Professor. Hello. Dear learners, please uh, wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, we have some technical problems. Please wait for a couple of minutes before we actually start. Okay. Yes, Professor. Can you see me again? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, You're back. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. we start now. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Dear learners, thank you for joining us. As you know, today is the last QA session with Professor Sugil Young about SDGs for development and leveraging Korean experience and economic growth and transport investment in South Korea. So before we start, let's give uh, the floor to Professor Sugil Young for his introductory remarks. Uh, oh, hello, uh, to folks out there. I'm very pleased uh, to be uh, engaging uh, in this discussion uh, with you on Korea's experiences. Uh, today, uh, I think we're supposed to uh, focus on two uh, subject areas. One is about uh, the role of transportation and how to build the transportation capacity uh, for the purpose of uh, facilitating uh, economic growth. And that's that. So transportation is one area, and the other one, uh, a bit of a more encompassing nature. Uh, we will uh, cover uh, how to uh, implement the SDGs for the purpose of facilitating uh, sustainable development uh, with some references to the Korean experiences. So uh, we, how will we get started, uh, Arnold? Okay, Professor, thank you. So we'll start by the module 10 with uh, questions regarding SDGs. So yes. the first question that we got from the discussion forum is uh, about how Korea is doing so far regarding the SDGs, which on which goal Korea has, is doing very well, which goal Korea has already achieved, and which other goal uh, Korea is, is not doing so well or is still striving to achieve? Okay, uh, first of all, Korea has uh, made a remarkable, uh, very rapid, uh, economic development over the previous uh, four to five decades uh, since the very early 1960s. And Korea's such remarkable uh, development performance uh, has been referred to as uh, Korea's Korean economic miracle. But the Korean economic miracle uh, basically focused on economic development and especially economic growth uh, also with uh, considerable progress in terms of social development. But uh, Korea, uh, during those uh, half century of very rapid economic uh, growth and development, Korea has uh, uh, not paid sufficient attention to the uh, environmental uh, protection. So, uh, so that's uh, one big area where Korea has is right now lagging um, in implementing uh, the um, SDGs. Uh, Korea uh, is one of the very poorly performing countries in terms of uh, taking uh, climate actions, especially uh, the actions to uh, reduce the uh, carbon dioxide emissions uh, from the energy system because Korea has 
uh, its uh, industrial structure is very much uh, based on uh, the use of extensive use of fossil fuels like coal and gas and oil. Uh, so uh, here, uh, Korea has a very long way to go, or it has to move rather uh, quickly uh, and with decisiveness in decarbonizing its energy system. But as we try to do so, we may be weakening the uh, competitiveness of Korea's industry. Uh, move a rapid, uh, take a rapid actions in terms of reducing uh, the use of fossil fuels. Um, it faces a strong uh, resistance uh, from the uh, Korean business community and industries, especially. So that's one big area where we have a problem, and uh, we um, also have. Uh, uh, some problems uh, in the area of uh, protecting the terrestrial uh, ecosystems. Uh, in the past, through the process of rapid industrialization, uh, we have been uh, producing a lot of waste, uh, the air pollutants uh, and water pollutants, and we are right now having a special problem uh, in coping with air pollution. Uh, we experience, uh, uh, we, we have, we have uh, high concentrations of, we get high concentration of fine dusts or yeah. what they call a particulate matters uh, in the air, uh, half of which uh, comes from the uh, domestic sources such as uh, coal power, uh, generation and uh, the heavy use of diesel oil uh, by by uh, by trucks uh, and then we also get a lot of fine dust or particulate matters blowing from china or actually uh, from the mongolian deserts uh, beyond uh, china and as the uh, the uh, fine uh, and the, the, the fine uh, sand dust yeah. blow uh, from the uh, west to toward uh, the Korean side, it passes over the sky of China, where it picks up a lot of industrial pollutants from uh, coal fire power generators, as well as the factories and they eventually uh, uh, arrive on the uh, Korean Peninsula. So mm -hmm. well, from those two sources, we have uh, uh, heavy uh, uh, current yeah. of fine dust uh, uh, the covering the, the sky in Korea. Not every day, but maybe once every three days or something like that. Yes. And that presents a very serious risk to public health. So we are very much worried about it, and we have a big uh, task uh, to to uh, accomplish. Now, Korea has been maybe regarded as doing relatively well in terms of the SDG uh, uh, nine uh, and SDG eight and nine, which is about economic growth, yeah. and also. Uh, the SDG 9 for a building sufficient infrastructure yeah. and in terms of promoting technological innovation, here we are doing relatively uh, well. But we also have, in recent years, we've been having an increasingly serious problem of increasing social inequalities domestically uh, in terms of uh, distribution of the fruits of economic growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there has been uh, visible signs of uh, social polarization mm -hmm. uh, between 
those who are well-to-do yeah. and between those who belong to the uh, low-income class people. So the current government is making a very serious effort to close the gap to, pro to, uh, to promote uh, social equalities. And okay. um, then we also have a uh, serious problem in terms of uh, uh, implementing the SDG 5, which is about gender equality. Uh, Korea for many decades and centuries have long been governed by the uh, cultural uh, tradition of uh, of um, of, uh, of uh, women having yeah. to follow follow uh, the leadership of men yeah. uh, at home and in, at, 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 at the workplaces yeah. and everywhere and even in in, in the government uh, that is was the uh, outcome uh, or the result of the Confucianism uh, the teaching of Confucius yeah. who always considered basically a male a man, as, as the guys who run the country and run uh, home uh, houses uh, and so on. Now, in that regard, um, the uh, Korea began to uh, reduce or address what used to be the very serious uh, gender inequality. Uh, for example, uh, women earning only uh, uh, half of income as men for example yes. uh and the uh, women receiving uh, less education than than men it was like that up to the uh um 1970s and even early 1980s but yes. since then there has been a rapid improvement in the uh, in the uh, reduction of gender inequalities mm. uh, because the government encouraged and supported uh, the education for women. Uh, the government also uh, created uh, special uh, research institutes on problems of women, uh, including the most uh, central uh, one called Women Korea Women's Development uh, Institute. And uh, uh this uh these two things this uh, uh education of women uh as well as uh undertaking serious studies about the problems uh, facing uh, women uh, in getting integrated into society these two have been the main uh, development that have korea helped korea accelerate uh, the elimination of gender uh, inequalities mm. so yeah. today we have a, uh, a, a, a a we have by by today we have reduced a lot of gender inequalities but still yeah. uh, there are uh, the one the main problem that we are having uh, is in the area of employment mm. the uh, women uh, have to get normally get married uh, toward the age of 830 yes. and then they are married and they have children and in order to take care of children uh, women they quit jobs even if they have you know had one yeah. and then uh, once uh, the kids have have uh, you know grown up enough the women would like to come back to uh, jobs yeah. but it's very difficult to get back into uh, the labor market uh, 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 among other reasons uh, including because of the fact that uh, they have lost much of this uh, work skills they have acquired mm -hmm. during this process of uh, taking care of uh, kids at home so we are trying to sort of you know uh, uh, help women overcome this problem yeah. of uh, of what we call this m shaped uh, m alphabet m m shaped yeah, uh, career of women yeah. and then uh, as a result of various adversities uh, that face women as they struggle through the society yeah. the uh, fertility rate has declined very sharply so that today as of today korea is probably 
uh, one of the fastest um, aging population uh, around the world. And so uh, we, we are, the government and the public the society are making special efforts to take this gender inequality issues very seriously uh, for many reasons, uh, including for the purpose of reducing uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 including inc increasing the, uh, the fertility rate yes. of women. And uh, so that's, we have that problem of uh, gender inequality. And uh, we have Nothing. this problem of, of, uh, of uh, high emission of carbon dioxide, which is related with both SDG 13 as well as SDG 7, which is about clean energy. Our energy is basically not so clean because they are very much dependent on fossil fuel mm -hmm. and generate a lot of uh, carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And then we have the problem of uh, rather large uh, inequalities. Uh, yeah. That's the goal uh, 10. Uh, so here are the main uh, problem areas. Uh, and in terms of the overall uh, development standing uh, by 17 SDGs, yeah. Uh, the uh, so-called UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, uh, which is an international global uh, network of experts on sustainable development uh, issues, uh, undertake an annual assessment of individual countries' performance by the SDGs. And just uh, last July, they issued the third annual report, the one for this year, and it covers 154 countries and there korea ranked the 19th out of 154 countries so mm. the overall korea's performance is not that bad yeah uh, and we should note that even the best performing countries by sdgs which are uh, countries like sweden denmark and so on those in scandinavia yeah. even those countries have most many of the SDGs uh, uh, on, in which they have a long way to go. Yeah. And uh, so the SDGs meeting, implementing the SDGs is a challenge not only to developing countries, but also to the developed countries. Yeah. And especially in the case of developed countries, most of them uh, have long way to go in terms of taking appropriate climate uh, change actions yeah. like uh, reducing uh, the carbon dioxide emissions uh, because they are very much dependent industries and a lot of uh, you know consumption of energy so they have made a problem in this area rather than developing countries uh, in terms of uh, the climate change uh, actions and so uh, uh, so that's where we are and uh, the uh, many governments including Korea have already been organized or are uh, getting organized in order to to approach the implementation of the SDGs uh, in with effectiveness. Okay, okay, Professor. Um, so you told us a bit about the good points and the points where Korea is struggling to to still achieve uh, SDGs. At the start of your point, you, uh, you say that on the social aspect. Korea is doing quite well. And for those who take things for granted, I would like to I would like you to give us some ideas uh, of roughly how where Korea was uh, compared to what is being like in terms of education uh, back in the in back uh, 30 years ago, uh, what was the, the rate, the literacy rate and what the difference with today so that people can see the progress that Korea has made uh, like mm -hmm. uh, in these different social uh, policies? Uh, okay, actually, um, mm. uh, I didn't say that Korea is doing well in on, on social goals. Yeah. In particular, I said that uh, the the increasing social inequalities or increasing inequalities uh, in terms of income and wealth distribution uh, is an er area where uh, Korea the problem for Korea is worsening. So um, so th that's 
and that has to do with the fact that uh, nowadays this is happening in many other countries as well uh, the economic growth is being led by knowledge intensive sectors uh, uh, and technology intensive uh, sectors so that uh, economic growth is not accompanied by uh, increases in, in, in employment yeah. is not accompanied by a much employment increase in employment yeah. so that uh, while the economic growth uh, takes place uh, the uh, job situation tends to worsen and also the, those workers who are at the lower level of skills uh, uh, tends to f uh, th they are, are excluded from the benefits of technological innovation yeah. uh, and innovation-led economic growth yeah. and that has been contributing to uh, increasing uh, income inequalities uh, in Korea nowadays, and especially we face a rather serious state of unemployment for uh, for young people, uh, uh, because the job market uh, has not been very much uh, well absorbing new labor force. Okay. So that's one area where we have a problem. Now, uh, one a major uh, way of solving this problem of uh, youth unemployment as well as reducing uh, the, uh, the 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 economic inequalities uh, yeah. uh, between different classes income classes would be uh, to uh, facilitate uh, the the uh, education yeah. of the workforce with a focus on up up uh, scaling uh, the level of um, knowledge and the skills yeah. of the new uh, workforce. Now, in terms of education, uh, Korea made a very good early start, uh, say, uh, 60 years ago or so. That was uh, right after Korea's liberation from Japan. Uh, then when Korea was very poor, um, one of the first things that the uh, Korean government uh, pursued and did very well was to undertake a universal primary school education campaign. So uh, they, in the 1950s, uh, they uh, formulated a, uh, a seven-year plan for uh, universal uh, primary school education. And by the late 1950s, Korean uh, illiteracy was virtually eliminated and the rate of literacy uh, reached uh, the level of something like 97 percent so essentially we eliminated illiteracy very early in uh, korea's uh, modern history of development and then we uh, launched uh, uh, industrialization in earnest in the 1960s we began with labor intensive industries uh, over time uh, the labor intensive industries gave way to more technology intensive uh, sectors and in order to keep up with that pace of industrial uh, uh, in development or uh, uh, or the uh, upgrading of the industrial structure uh, korean government uh, began to uh, to uh, introduce uh, many kinds of uh, vocational schools uh, in order to train uh, and prepare uh, young workers for a higher level of skill uh, for for jobs and in, in the industries in particular and also uh, korea achieved the universal primary school education in the 19 primary school uh, i'm sorry uh, middle school uh, education uh, in the 1950s uh, meaning that all eligible school kids uh, young children young people uh, uh, went to middle school okay. and that was soon followed by 
offering uh, universal high school education for all eligible uh, young kids uh, in Korea. So we achieved this universal education at the primary school level first, and followed by middle school level, and then further followed by the high school level. And in between, we also offered a whole lot of vocational schools uh, uh, on sites uh, at the places of employment uh, and so on. And we also emphasized, especially the creating and offering uh, schooling in uh, technical schools. And that supported continuing industrial development. And then in the 1980s and thereafter, uh, the uh, Korean government uh, began to uh, boost the uh, university level education and, uh, and, and, and so that uh, by now about uh, close to 90% uh, of high school graduates go to universities. Oh. So we have been emphasizing education all along. It has been one of the highest priorities in Korea's pursuit of uh, development. But now, as you see, we have this new knowledge uh, intensive uh, society where the, the, the information communication technology is changing the nature of, uh, of the work, uh, especially uh, uh, facilitating uh, the labor saving uh, technologies uh, and that um, and while emphasizing uh, the importance of uh, very high level uh, uh, technologies uh, and so here uh, we, the Korean government now has to and is trying to uh, prepare young people for the sophisticated technologies and for uh, having them pursue the line of uh, uh, specialization uh, which is consistent with the emerging new technologies so there we are struggling uh, now okay okay thank you professor so um Korea has been emphasizing uh, education since a long time ago, and this uh, special policy focus on education has uh, is bearing fruits nowadays because uh, Koreans are educated. So, Professor, let's move to a second question on still on SDGs. Oh, so the second question is about coordination. Maybe for advanced countries where uh, they have. Uh, the, per the needed personnel, they are qualified, it can be quite easier for them to coordinate uh, the different uh, SDGs. But for poor, for poor countries, countries with, which don't have enough means, uh, maybe these SDGs could be uh, quite difficult to coordinate. So can you suggest a kind of strategies for these countries to set priorities or uh, to try to uh, reach the maximum of SDGs they can, given the resources that they have? I think uh, you are raising the question, first of all, of the efficiency of the government. Yeah. Somehow. Now, uh, a, one of the uh, preconditions for uh, development is, of course, to secure a well-functioning government uh, consisting of capable officials, well-trained officials, as well as a government uh, which uh, uh, is good in terms of uh, coordinating different ministries. Uh, and also you would need a good uh, vertical coordination between the president or the leader, and the lower level of officials. So in various directions, you have to secure a good coordinating function. Uh, and that regardless of the state of development, stage of development, you have to do that. And okay. in the Korean case, 
Korea successfully uh, launched uh, this uh, rapid economic uh, growth, uh, which has been uh, identified as uh, in the press as Korea's economic miracle uh, by first establishing a very well-functioning uh, government. Yeah. Um, in particular, uh, we uh, in the 19, early 1960s, as we launched the uh, high economic growth, yeah. then President uh, Park Jung-hee created something called Economic Planning Board, which is a super economic ministry. Uh, it is headed by the Deputy Prime Minister, and he can coordinate uh, all economic related and social uh, ministries for a consistent uh, government policies, uh, which harmonizes the objectives of individual ministries. Uh, and the, the, the Economic Planning Board uh, executed uh, its uh, uh, coordinating function effectively by undertaking the five-year plans. At the beginning of each five year, they all the ministries get together and they formulate a five year plan for economic and social uh, development. And in another five years, they do the second five year plan, the third five year plan, and so on. And this five year plan, notice that is a five year plan, meaning that the government has to uh, think at least over the next five years and even more. So that the five-year planning sort of uh, uh, forced or helped the government to think at least for the next five years. Yeah. Actually, the Korean government in those days thought so longer than that. They thought about more than 10 years into the future. And they even also uh, for, uh, prepared seven-year plans and five-year, 10-year uh, plans in various uh, uh, sectors in order to support uh, the implementation of five-year plans and uh, uh, in order to uh, the the in order to uh, con did you say uh, the the control conflicts of interest or yes yeah in order to uh, harmonize conflicting interests yeah. uh, among ministries and conflicting interests among ministries are a reflection of conflict of interest among the populations in general in order to do that, uh, you need to have this kind of uh, interministerial uh, coordinating as well as planning mechanism. So uh, for the purpose of implementing the SDGs, I think countries will have to take the same approach. And uh, in the case of SDGs, yeah. since these SDGs cover not only economic goals, but also environmental goals and social goals and so on, I think each uh, government is recommended to set up a inter-ministerial coordinating mechanism at the highest level, ideally chaired by the president or the prime minister. Uh, and uh, the Korean government is right now uh, um, is now uh, uh, preparing legislation of what is called the Framework Act for Sustainable Development, yeah. uh, which will, among other things, will um, call for the launching of a of a a a, 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 an, a, a presidential yeah. uh, committee on sustainable development, which will consist of all the relevant ministers, uh, and which in consultation with the private sector, yeah. uh, will will sort of uh, sort out and establish the goals and especially the national targets, as well as formulate the strategies of implementing the 17 SDGs. Mm -hmm. uh, and further, uh, further uh, formulate specific policies in order to implement those strategies. So okay. uh, setting up an interministerial uh, coordinating mechanism like that, attended by at least, and 
ideally chaired by the highest person in the government is the most desirable uh, okay. solution for the problem that you have posed. Okay, so Professor, thank you for this suggestion. Now let's look at the conflict of interest, not between ministries, but between the goals themselves. Like develop, for example, developing countries are seeking growth, but at the same time, they are constrained like environmental protection. So this can be like conflicting goals that are uh, included in the SDGs. How can developing countries deal with this issue? How can they like choose uh, the right strategy to pursue okay, what they know, uh, yes, As you uh, suggest, tend to be conflicts among them. Yeah. That is the reason why yeah. these SDGs are necessary. Yeah. The SDGs force each government to think about policy objectives across those three dimensions, yeah. and it forces the government to, to, uh, to uh, discuss and formulate uh, policy solutions which harmonizes those three dimensions all together. Uh, and uh, uh, now how do we uh, resolve the uh, conflicts? Hmm. Well, the, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is the document which declares the SDGs, also uh, prescribes the solution as follows. Uh, it says that for an effective implementation of the SDGs, uh, each government should establish uh, what it calls a, a uh, follow-up and review mechanism mm -hmm. uh, where uh, various goals and targets are discussed, where policy options are discussed, yeah. and uh, and 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 what specific policies to pursue are discussed, and that uh, mechanism, the according to the 2030 agenda document, yeah. should be open to all interested citizens, yeah. and all interested groups all uh, the scientific communities, yeah. all businesses. Yeah. So that if a citizen has a certain complaint, he or she should come forward and to submit that position to that uh, discussion process, which is open, transparent, and democratic. Mm. So in that way, uh, this, uh, if there are, conflict of interest among citizens, they should come forward and participate in this open process of discussion and 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 uh, and and engage in a debate and discussion until they agree to a compromise solution. So it is only through this open and democratic process uh, which involves the, the citizens and all kinds of interest groups uh, which can uh, help uh, resolve uh, conflicts of interest. So this, this, you might think about this as sort of a, a, of a prescription for a governance system of a country and its openness and uh, and uh, its uh, uh, the, the, the the democratic nature of this open uh, mechanism is key. Is the ultimate solution to the uh, uh, resolution of conflicts of interest okay thank you and many that. countries mm -hmm. like uh, you know in uh, ethiopia or um, in indonesia in south yeah. east asia and many countries developing countries yeah. have already launched such a high level uh, interministerial uh, discussion processes yeah. so it's no special handicap for developing countries to okay. think of an imp uh, mechanism like this. And they need such an uh, interministerial mechanism anyway. Yeah. Although the SDGs have given them the right framework in which to 
uh, design such a process. Okay. Thank you, Professor. We have uh, a question from the audience. Uh, there is William who is asking, uh, does Korea pursue a technology development in home ground uh, registering the number of patents or would Korean government prefer importing uh, technology? Like, is Korea uh, trying to develop its own technology or importing technology from outside? Okay. Um... Korea now, as a result of uh, five, four or five decades of continued industrial development, uh, have joined the ranks of advanced countries in terms of technological capabilities. However, back in the early days of uh, uh, its development or our development, uh, Korea uh had not did not have uh, possess uh, good enough technologies uh, as we launched industrial uh, development so we uh on the on the on the one hand uh, we we depended on technologies uh, uh which we bought from yeah. abroad, yeah. paying for patents and so on, or by importing technology intensive equipment itself yeah. to make factories over here. Yeah. So that's what we did, and that helped uh, to, ex uh, to to uh, launch uh, rapid economic growth. Uh, and we did that uh, with labor intensive industries, which are not so intensive in technologies like uh, you know uh, like uh, uh, textiles uh, the even the plywood uh, industry and so on on the other hand at the same time we actually uh, tried to create our own capability in technologies in basic industries such as uh, cement uh, such as steel uh, and even yes, uh, so we, we also invested in uh, what we called basic and strategic industries, yeah. uh, in which we had to uh, cultivate our own technological uh, know-how. Yeah. Uh, for that, we protected those industries from foreign uh, competition. Uh, and then we uh, we formulated five year plan for uh, for science and technologies yeah. to support the five year plan for economic development. Yes. In other words, the five year plan for economic development sort of uh, uh, sets the target for technological development. And then we formulated five year plan for science and technology in order to reach that target level of technology in specific strategic sectors that we chose. So we tried both ways. And for that, uh, Korean government, uh, uh, actually, it's not Korean government, but in those days, many uh, young people went to abroad to advance the countries, especially to the United States, to undertake a high level education like a PhD uh, courses, yeah. and the government sort of encouraged them to go there. So they go went there and they acquired a PhD level educations in technologies. Uh, and then the government created research institutes in Korea, yeah. like Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technologies. And there were similar others as well created, okay. which invited those uh, Korean talent uh, brains educated abroad, uh, invite them back by offering very good wages and very good working uh, environment and very good uh, uh, fringe benefits. And so many of the uh, young Korean brains uh, trained abroad for in higher technologies came back to Korea and they were a main driver of 
Korea's technological development, science and technology development in Korea. So we tried both. And in fact, in some strategic sectors, the Korean government did not even welcome foreign direct investment. It encouraged Korean businessmen yeah. to uh, run that business industries uh, in the course of which they would invest in their R and D and in in their own required technological manpower. So we sort of uh, you know uh, used a mixture of strategies. So, Professor, the situation, the current situation, uh, is that Korea is also an exporter of technology, right? Exactly. And furthermore, we are trying, in a way, we are trying to sort of share our advanced technological know-how with other developing countries. Yeah. And so, uh, with assist financial assistance from the uh, Korea International. Development Agency or COICA, uh, uh, many Korean universities are establishing uh, research institutes or participating in local universities in developing countries uh, in order to share their technological uh, know how with the local uh, uh, brains like yeah. professors uh, and so on. So yeah. we are trying to share our technological know how for the benefit of developing countries okay thank you professor the time we are almost short of time but there's another question from uh, the audience uh, there is ran ran was asking how korea is going to sustain its future economic growth given the extremely low birth rate you talked about the low birth rate in korea is not is not that a threat for korea the future growth in korea well you Brand, Mr. Brand, you, yeah, Mr. Juan, Mr. Juan, yeah. you raise a question, the most difficult question, <laughs> which even the Korean government is now at a loss at how to answer. It that Korea's uh, fertility rate, total fertility rate, right now is about something like 1.0, 1.02, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as I said. Korea has become probably the world's most rapidly aging society. And this presents a major threat uh, to the long term prosperity and development of uh, Korea. And so there has been a lot of discussions about how to raise the fertility rate. It's like, you know, asking how to have women get married, as many women get married as possible, and how to get them pair as many children as possible. I mean, you know, that's the, the very bare element of, uh, of the issue here. Yeah. But there are many societal forces which work against a high fertility rate here. Uh, the uh, most, there are many, many reasons uh, which have been keeping the fertility rate uh, down. Uh, and uh, uh, Overall, I have mentioned that uh, we are a country with a long tradition of discrimination of women as part of the old traditional Confucian culture. And we have been making good progress in terms of uh, uh, reducing, uh, decreasing uh, that, uh, the, the uh, weakening the, the culture. So, uh, gender equality has been nearly achieved as of today, but there are such uh, inevitable factors as uh, the uh, the the uh, unavoidability of employment disruption in the case of married women because of getting married and having to bear children. And uh, now with this uh, job market has been opening to women as well rapidly, mm -hmm. and that increases the opportunity cost of, of, uh, of employment. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, if you uh, women would get married and have, uh, have children and raise them, they 
will have to sacrifice the employment. That means a loss of a lot of income. Yeah. Uh, but then the cost of education is also uh, increasing very rapidly, especially in those days. And that also works against uh, high uh, fertility of uh, women. Uh, so uh, the Korean government uh, is coming up with the number of support measures for women who are getting married and who are having having uh, uh, having children no. like income subsidies for those who have more than two children uh, and so on but still the environment is very bad education schooling is also mm. a particular challenge cost of education is very high in this country uh, and uh, uh, the so this uh -huh requires a long-term approach yeah. uh, there is no one solution or two which would fix the problem uh, we are trying to come up with a a a a, a package yeah. a number a, a group of measures to address this uh to uh, uh, help uh also uh, to 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 uh, for example having uh men husbands yeah. to share the burden of raising children uh and also uh to uh, facilitate the return return of married women to jobs after giving uh, birth to uh, children and and raising them and uh, uh so uh so we are in the middle of a very intense search and national debate about yeah. how to uh, uh, raise the fertility rate. Mm. I'm afraid that my answer is not very good. Professor, thank you. You gave a, a very good picture of uh, the situation in Korea regarding this issue. Professor, we'll take a last question because uh, the time is running very fast. We'll take a last question on infrastructure uh, just to cover, to have a say on this issue. So, Professor, we know that in uh, almost all the countries, uh, the very populated areas, the very populated cities have higher demand in infrastructure than uh, these uh, other cities that are not very populated. So how can the government uh, try to balance uh, the provision of infrastructure, of quality infrastructure to these cities uh, which are not very populated? Well, um, in the case of a... a uh in in the case especially of uh, low income developing countries resources are limited so you have to prioritize how to use prioritized investment in the transport facilities which would facilitate korea's export led economic growth so Korea invested in sea harbors for the purpose of, uh, you know, transporting uh, export goods and, and to import raw materials. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, Korea, despite objections from the World Bank and others, uh, the, uh, the President Park Jung at the time prioritized is building the Seoul Pusan Expressway, uh, which is the uh, Which is, which is the I'm sorry about this interruption okay, uh, which is the uh, uh, longest highway uh, linking Seoul which is what which was used to be the main industrial uh, area uh, to uh, the uh, this uh, Korea's largest seaport uh, which uh, links Korean market Korean industries producers to the global market that was particularly important and was a high priority item uh, for transport investment in order to facilitate the full-led growth, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way we began building the transportation networks. Yeah. And then there began a heavy concentration of population and a very serious uh, congestion in the Seoul city where most of economic activities took place. So yeah. Korea began to invest in building the network of subways. Yeah. So we followed the priorities 
uh, determined by the goal of uh, expediting export-led uh, growth. Yeah. Uh, so that left uh, much of the country, especially the countryside, um, uh, lacking investment in transportation infrastructure, as uh, you mentioned. Uh, but with with growth in income, with with increasing prosperity, the government was able uh, to begin to uh, invest in the local transportation infrastructure on the uh, uh, countryside as well. And uh, we have this uh, government budgeting system where uh, the government, central government supports a large portion of local government uh, deficits. But then it's up to the local authorities to determine the priorities for investment on how to use that budget. And it, it's up to them uh, as to how much of priority they assign to uh, uh, transportation uh, uh, development. And uh, But I think I should say this, that Korea uh, began to have a long-term transportation plan, plan covering the transportation needs for the, for the whole country as well as uh, by region. And it is through the discussion of this uh, national transportation plan that priori priorities uh, of transportation facilities in different regions were reconciled mm -hmm. and compromised. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also uh, with the, the need to expand transportation infrastructure kept rapidly increasing. And the key to that is to secure the uh, the financial uh, financial resources, yeah. the budget that is. And for that purpose, Korea uh, created a transportation special account by imposing a fuel tax on all transportations and use that fuel tax revenue uh, as the fund with which to finance the transportation network uh, investment. Uh, so you have to have such a tax revenue designated for specific purposes, especially the transportation investment, in order to facilitate uh, the development of the national transportation network. Yeah. And this investment in local networks accelerated once Korea launched the local autonomy in 1994. Before that time, uh, central government appointed the local government uh, heads, heads of local governments, and so through that system, the central government even determined the local priorities. But once we launched this local autonomy in which local residents elected the mayors and governors and so on, then uh, how to use money for local development is up to the wishes of the local citizens. And it is the citizens who demand uh, investment in local transportation infrastructure. In that way, it facilitated uh, development of local uh, transportation infrastructure uh, on the countryside. Okay. So it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an interplay of central government planning as well yeah. as local government planning. Okay, okay. Thank you, Professor. That was the last question. Thank you for the insight you've given us. Uh, that was very, very interesting discussion today. But unfortunately, today is our last live session. So, Professor, if you have um, concluding remarks, um, like to wrap up, not about only this Hello? live session, but all the Hello? course. Yes, Professor. Are, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I hear you. Yes. Okay. Um, Can you give your concluding remarks, not yes, only about yes, this yeah, chapter, yeah, but uh, yeah, about all yeah, the courses? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh, series of... Uh, uh, this MOOC series uh, is KDI School's uh, first such project. Now, having run this course, uh, we at KDI School sort of uh, discovers a number of shortcomings or weaknesses in this uh, MOOC. And also, uh, the contents we try to deliver, by we, I'm talking about those uh, experts who gave uh, the MOOC uh, video uh, lectures, um, they 
sort of uh, learned as they were preparing and giving those lectures so that at the end of the course they are now uh, wiser uh, and uh, better you know thought uh, through uh, about the challenges and problems that Korea has faced and uh, the kind of points which would be appreciated better by the uh, audiences uh, in the developing uh, world. And so we are now preparing to, uh, uh, to, to produce a, uh, another a MOOC uh, uh, under, of the, a similar, same purpose uh, with a similar structure, but with improved structure. Yeah. And as we embark uh, on that new project, we would appreciate uh, receiving your feedbacks as well as the kind of questions that you have been you know, presenting us with through this uh, live uh, Q&As, which we will uh, try to re reflect in the revision of the contents of the MOOC on Korean success story. And uh, we, uh, I and uh, uh, the rest of my colleagues uh, appreciate the attention uh, that you have uh, given to this MOOC and also uh, to this uh, live uh, Q&A sessions. And I thank you uh, for that. And I would welcome any uh, online feedbacks uh, through emails uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, and I think uh, Arnold and Ms. Yeah. Sojong Park at KDS School also can uh, facilitate that process of interactions between you and myself as well as my colleagues. So yeah. I look forward to continuing communication to, uh, with all of you. And I thank you once again for your participation. And thank you, Arnold, very much for your excellent uh, facilitation. Thank you, Professor. Thank you to all of you, dear learners. Uh, this is the last Q&A session for this uh, session uh, of uh, for this MOOC, this series of MOOC of lectures. Uh, so today is the last. Thank you very much for following us and see you uh, later.